Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to another exciting Houdini tutorial. Today, we're going to do carpet or towel, however you want to call it, okay? The techniques used in this tutorial are from my previous tutorial, which is called Bad Sponge. If you've not checked that out, I will leave a link in the description. Please go and check them out because I'm not going to explain those elements here in this tutorial, okay? All right, let's jump right into it. To speed up the process, I already created these notes. Let me explain them one by one. Okay, so this is the grain geo, which is basically a grid, which is four by eight. And I will come to the center thing here now. Um, row 10, 10, etc., etc. It's just simple grid. And I did an extrude volume and the depth is minus 0.1, okay? And I copied this depth and paste it here in the negative direction multiplied by one and a half times. Therefore, if I move this down, it stays like that, all right? And I want it above the ground plane a little bit because if you have it on the ground plane, the grains may jump. We don't want that, okay? So I'm just gonna change this back to 0.1 and I'm gonna move on. The next one is the grain source. Any, um, this is grain source, literally just grain geo. Um, let me just use this side here. Grain source is literally grain geo. It's just object merged here, okay? That's all that is. And I, that is because I want to separate grain source because I'm gonna be using the shelf tool. And if I wanna make changes, it's cleaner to make changes here, okay? The next one is the sphere, which I'm using to roll over the carpet. All right, so this is a basic sphere that I used the shelf tool to create, and then I remeshed it, and I'll explain why remeshing later on, and then I transformed it so that it sits just at the end here. Uh, let me enable the ghost. If I don't transform it, it's right in the middle, okay? That's why I transformed it and kind of on the ground plane, all right? And then I give it a rest position. Out RBD, I called. I don't know why, but I'll just call it out geo, I guess. And then I gave it a point velocity of six in the Z direction, which is this direction here, okay? So it should go that way. All right, let's move on. I created a camera which is like that, it just goes along. And a RS dome light, and I used Video Copilot environment. If you don't have that, you know, you can, I'm sure, get it from hdrihaven.com, I think. I will leave a link in the description for you, uh, it's no problem. All right, let's uh, click on the grain source. Let me disable the sphere. Click on the grain source and select vellum grains. Okay, nothing comes up, that's fine. We'll look at that, let me just set this up real quick. And if you go into grain source now, the shelf tool has created this for us, okay? So, which I'm sure everybody knows. But there's nothing coming up and that's because the grain says it's too high. So I'm gonna change this to 0 0.04, let's say. Suddenly, yeah, that's good, that appears. And I wanna add the jitter scale and I want to change the mass. Just give it a little bit of weight, okay? That's all that is. All right, the next I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to add connect adjacent points or pieces, sorry. Again, this technique is from the other tutorial, okay? So I'm gonna change the search radius to two in here and change the connection type to adjacent points so you get that. By default, you won't really get anything until you start increasing this. And I want to set this to two, okay? I want a very strong bond so that it doesn't break. All right, I'm gonna create a point pop here. I'm gonna call this attraction weight. I'm gonna dive inside. Let's create a anti-alias noise 
connect the position to position and noise to color for now okay so we can visualize this all right I'm going to change the noise type to simplex and increase the amplitude to 1.6 so you get a little bit more of a contrast okay and I'm going to use a bind export I'm going to export attraction weight again why attraction weight all all explained in the other video okay it's honestly better for you to go and check that out and then visit this one okay good so right now you've got an attraction weight and the range of the attraction weight is from 0.81 negative 0.81 to 0 0.587 so I'm gonna put in a fit range negative 0.8 to 0 0.6 and destination minimum I want to change it from 1 to 2 the reason 1 to 2 is because I don't want to have any part of this carpet or towel with zero attraction weight when you don't have attraction weight it will just disintegrate okay that's what it is all right good let's move on Okay, now I'm going to create a constraint, vellum constraints. I'm going to go ahead and change this to something else and then change it back to distance along edges. Okay. I'm going to set the thickness to calculate uniform and I'm going to set the edge length scale to 1. I will come back to this. Okay, and the stiffness, I want to set it to 100 and change this to 100,000. That's the number that worked. Obviously, you can play around with these. You will see different results for every change, basically. Okay, so we're done with the geo part. However, we don't want this coming out. So we will add a add node and delete it. So we only get the particles. And then we will connect the constraint to here. There is another part here which is again explained in the other tutorial, but I will put it down right now. So, what we have here is we have an attraction weight in the geo, okay, here, but in the constraint, we don't have that in the primitive group, we don't have that. So, we need to bring that in. What we will do is attribute copy and we will put it to which is the first input to constraints and the second input to the geo that way we can delete this and bring in our attraction weight there you go and then this remember the constraints are primitive uh, group so we need to promote this so attribute promote and change the new class will be primitive and we're going to bring in attraction weight now i'm going to enter a put in a primitive wrangle okay i'm going to type in s at type equals stitch s at break Type equals stretch stress and then at break threshold equals 1000 1000 is just a number that I like to have and the reason is if it's not there it's just too weak okay multiplied by attraction weight multiplied by channel float multiplier okay so break threshold is a threshold that allows these bonds to break 
The reason I have this so that we can reduce this number to a lower number so we can see the tearing happening, okay? All right, I'm gonna change this multiplier to 200. And then I'm gonna put in a color node and we are gonna change this to primitive and ramp from attribute. We're gonna call that attraction weight. Good. Change the range to from one to two. There you go. And I will change this to infrared, I guess. It doesn't matter. You can color it whatever you want. And I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna introduce a color. But this is point class and ramp from attribute attraction weight one to two and i'm going to call this also infrared there you go i'm going to put in a rest node here just in case all right so that's our grain source basically done